You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening and welcome. I'm Bo Williams. You're watching The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. Topping the list for us tonight, the new revelations surrounding the University of Tennessee's football program under former head coach Jeremy Pruitt. UT has now received a notice detailing the allegations against the program under Pruitt's tenure from the NCAA. One of the big takeaways is the amount of money that allegedly traded hands in the football program. Now, the NCAA says people like Pruitt and his wife Casey, along with several former assistant coaches, took part in what is being called impermissible recruiting, using tens of thousands of dollars for things ranging from cash payments, eating out, and travel expenses to paying for furniture and other household goods. Meanwhile, UT Chancellor Don D. Plowman is saying tonight, quote, while NCAA bylaws prohibit the university from publicly commenting about the specific allegations, we have and will continue to seek a timely resolution of this case. She goes on to say, in the meantime, we will continue to support our football program's new leadership, our exceptional student athletes, and the culture of winning and accountability they are building, end quote. And our next Big 7 story for you, it applies really to anyone with a phone. So that's going to be a lot of you, right? Uh, you can now help keep Knoxville beautiful with its new approach to keeping litter off roadways and along waterways. Here is Six On Your Side reporter Veronica Obey to explain how it all works. That's right. To keep any areas you're familiar with from looking like this, you'll first need to download the My Knoxville app. And from there, you'll create an account and then submit a request. Conchove, the executive director at Keep Knoxville Beautiful, says this initiative is meant to help make city officials aware of any problem areas. Submitted requests should be completed within 30 days, and while you wait for it to be completed, Khan says you can also form groups to pick up litter. Their organization lends out equipment, but there's other things to keep in mind to help better the environment. To use less plastic, um, to recycle, to teach your kids, you know, if you're going on walks with your kids, you know, teach them good habits. Um, clean up after yourselves, put things away in the trash or recycling bin. And if you're unable to download the app or don't have a smartphone, there's no worries there. You can dial 311 to be able to report any litter in the area. We'll have more information on that over on our website at WATE.com. Reporting in Knoxville, Veronica Obey, WATE 6 on your side. Veronica, thank you. Next now on the Big 7, a Jefferson County man is facing federal charges. The FBI accusing him of shooting out windows at a federal office building in Knoxville earlier this month. The subject has been identified as Mark Thomas Reno. In court paperwork, federal agents say they were already carrying out surveillance on Reno, where he allegedly admitted to undercover agents that he was part of a group known as Church Militant Resistance, and telling agents he was at the U.S. Capitol during the January 6th riot. An FBI agent claims Reno also made several statements about destroying federal property and government buildings. On July 3rd, the windows were shot out of the federal building in Knoxville. Investigators say a tracking device federal agents had placed on Reno's car captured him traveling to the building that day and then slowing in front of the windows. Security cameras at the federal building also captured footage of what appeared to be Reno's vehicle in the area at that time. Next on our list, a woman is behind bars after a witness says she punched and spat on a 71-year-old woman. Police say the video shows the suspect, Erica Neal, yelling and threatening the victim, who is her mother. It also shows Neal spitting on her mother twice while she pushed her into a table and punched her in the face. The witness who, is, who shot the video is the father of Neal's child. Reports say the victim had pain in her eye and a visible bruise. And we are also learning that a Knoxville man is facing an assault charge after he allegedly hit a nurse. We're told this happened at UT Medical Center on Wednesday. Court records say Christopher Waldrop hit the nurse with a closed fist, causing her hand to be crushed between his hand and the rail of a stretcher he was lying on. No word on what led up to the encounter. Next now on the 7, the CDC is now saying that a number of East Tennessee counties have a high transmission rate of COVID-19 right now. Those counties include, you see it on your screen here, Roan, Morgan, Anderson, Campbell, Hancock, Hamblin, Granger, and Jefferson counties. Before this update, Cock County was our only county that had a high COVID transmission rate. We should note Cock County now has a medium transmission rate. Meanwhile, the CDC says Knox County's COVID transmission rate remains at the medium level as well. 
Continuing our Big 7 coverage for you, the Knox County Health Department is investigating a monkeypox case in the county. We're being told that a Knox County resident likely contracted the virus outside of Knox County more than a week ago. KCHD is encouraging anyone who develops monkeypox symptoms to reach out to their primary care provider or the health department to get tested. Monkeypox symptoms include a rash, fever, swollen lymph nodes. We also need to point out that because monkeypox transmission requires direct touch, it is harder to spread than COVID. The Knox County Health Department adds the risk to Knox Countyans remains low. And rounding up the Big Seven for us tonight, the community is coming together to support a Knox County teacher diagnosed with cancer. Crystal Moore is a seventh grade teacher at Powell Middle. Now, she was diagnosed with breast cancer in late June and will begin treatment starting next week. Family and friends have started a GoFundMe account to help her with her medical bills. When you're going through something like this and the uncertainty and, and it's scary, it, it gives you a huge peace of mind and comfort that that many people are reaching out and want to help. Moore says she will continue to teach this coming school year. She says she has to to be able to keep up with the medical bills. And we'll have a link to the GoFundMe account on our website, WAT.com. Their goal, by the way, is to raise $50,000. Right now, they have just under $3,000.